Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. And today we are going to do some fun highlighter kindness rocks. So for this project, all you need is water, um, a couple paint brushes, uh, just because you don't want to mix your color on your paint brushes um, highlighters i've got these two are sharpie brand this one's skillcraft i don't even know just highlighters that i have around the house um, i have three different colors they're, they're basically primary ish colors so they'll blend well um, with each other and then i have these fun little stones i will link to these because they're amazing and you get a whole bunch of them and they're actually not crazy expensive, but they make amazing kindness rocks. So if you're new to the channel, um, my name is Susie and I like to make rock painting tutorials for beginners. These will be simple styles, things that you can easily recreate. Uh, at the beginning of this video, I'm going to do this fun base coat technique. I will let them dry and come back and create some fun word rocks so you can see how I build um, my kindness rock uh, wording if that's something that you're interested in so stick around to the second half for that um if you haven't yet make sure that you subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up all that fun things and we will get started so the first color combination we're going to do is going to be pink and yellow so the darker the color the more harsh that line will be so you want to get into there with your water fairly quickly so i'm going to take my pink highlighter we're going to go right along the top edge here because that we want to stay nice and thick and then we're going to kind of zigzag it off like so and we're going to get some water in here and we're just going to dab that edge just so it doesn't completely set but be careful not to get it all the way to the other side because we don't want our highlighter actually touching the water so now i'm going to go here on the opposite side and place my yellow and then kind of get it close but don't touch that water Okay, and then we're gonna come in with our water again. I'm gonna kind of dab off, I don't want pink in there. And then we're gonna lay the water on top of that yellow and then kind of into, let it kind of bleed together, just like that. Make sure to get this all the way to the edges. You see how those colors kind of bleed and marry together and you can kind of wiggle it around, kind of play with it a little bit. Um, you don't want the whole rock to turn into that middle color, so just kind of let it sit on top. And as it dries, you can give it little bursts of air to get that color to create these kind of edges. And that will make more sense as it starts to dry. So for now, we're just going to set it off to the side here and let it kind of do its thing. And we'll come back to it in a little bit. Um, next, I'm, let me do, we've got uh, blue and yellow here so again place one color start all the way at the top here get that nice and thick of color at the top and then kind of wiggle it down in and you hit that with the water fairly quick before it really sets in there just helps so you don't get those like lines of color again don't let the water come all the way across Oops. get our Yellow down on this side. Get close to the center. Make sure you don't have any blue in that brush. Kind of rinse it out. And then we'll go right into that yellow. Boom, 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 boom. Just wiggle it right up to that line. You'll start to get that fun green. It can kind of move together here. And you can kind of wiggle it a little bit. Like if you want to kind of marry them a little bit more. And let it set off. So pretty. And these are so bright. I love the brightness of them. Once they dry a little bit more, I can pull them up and you'll be able to see them a little bit better. So now what do we have left? Pink and blue. So let me make sure I rinse that yellow out of my brush back here. All right. Pink on top here. Kind of wiggle on those lines if you can see i'm kind of wiggling just a little bit just to kind of loosen them up make sure 
there's no pink in that brush. There we go. So we've got our three combinations here. Make sure you get moisture everywhere. There we go. And we're gonna let these dry. Now, like I said, as they're drying, I kind of like the edges to kind of gather the paint. So if you take, this one's been going the longest, as it's drying, you can kind of wiggle the paint back and forth a little bit, make sure it's placed where you kind of want it. You'll get this drying edge along the outside and you can kind of give little bursts of air in the center. And I have, this stainless steel straw, which helps me not put my head in front of the camera. You can definitely just do this with a burst of air overhead um, if you're not filming. But uh, this way I can kind of blow that out to the edges. Oop, and I still hit you with my head. <laughs> okay, so as it's drying, you can do that so that you get this edge of color um, where it's a little bit darker. You can kind of see it happening on this one a little bit more. See how they get in that kind of edge. And the center will be a little bit more opaque as it dries. This one's really pretty. I love the color combination of that. So I'm gonna pause this camera and let these dry completely. I'm not gonna touch them at all while they dry. Okay, our rocks are fully dry. It did take a little bit longer than I thought. Um, I did let them sit about an hour just because I am gonna go on them with a paint pen. So I wanna make sure they were dry all the way through. But here is our pink and yellow. Yellow and blue. And the pink and blue. So as you can see here, so for comparison, there, there's the white so you can see that the color. They're a little bit opaque in some areas, translucent, whatever you want, but you can still see like the sparkle from the stone through, which I really love. Now, when I was talking about before, I didn't want to sit and um, manipulate them while they were drying, um, just because I wasn't filming the entire time. But you see how you get this like edge? So while they're drying, you'll get these little edges and you can blow the water around to get different areas where you'll get these little edges. Um, you can contain your water on top of your rock instead of letting it fall over the edges to get more crisp lines like that if you like. See how this one you got kind of this nice edge. So um, if you keep the water up on top, this one took the longest to dry because it was all settled on top and it wasn't running over the edges, um, but it did get that really cool outline. So if you're looking for those kind of lines like that, maintain the water on the surface of your stone. Don't let it run over the edges and you'll really get that edge um, to your coloring. So when I'm doing word rocks, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make a quick little template um, so I can write my word just once on a piece of paper so I can make sure that it's gonna fit on my stone, especially when I'm working on stones like this where the base coat isn't just a, a plain black or a plain um, white that you can just fix your mistakes really easily. So I have this notepad and it's really funny because these little rectangles are close to the size of um, these rocks. They're a little bit bigger, but it gives me a good gauge. Now, if I didn't have this notebook, I would just outline my rock uh, to give myself an area to aim for. So, I, oh, it's in my lap. <laughs> I was looking for my black paint pen. So I have a 1M extra fine tip paint pen. This is an Artistro brand one. I've got Posca brand ones as well. Um, as long as it's an extra fine tip, you can usually get pretty good lettering on your rocks. You could do this with white lettering too. I just really like nice bold letters for my word rocks um, even on these lighter surfaces so uh, decide what you want to put on your rock and then you can sp play with your spacing so I'm going to do a lowercase u and then big cap locks See, and this is why I do this, because look, when I gauge this, 
I can bring my stone back and look, I'm gonna be really close to the edges. So I know when I go to do my stone, I'm gonna have to go a little bit smaller than that. And also, Y-O-U, three letters, right? So the middle of my word needs to be closer to the middle of my O in order for me to kind of have that centered. So those are a couple little things that I do to kind of check my design. So I'm gonna try again here. A lot of times I'll use pencil, but I kind of like using the pen that I'm gonna use on my rock because you'll see the thickness as well. So instead this time, I'm gonna make sure my T's kind of split at the O. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the T's first like this. And then I can build in each direction. Like that. See, and now uh, it looks like that would fit on my stone okay. Obviously when you're working on your rock, you can change things even more. Um, and then you can go in and you can make your letters a little more fun um, or dynamic. You can change you know, the style and things like that. You can thicken them up, whatever you wanna do. Um, you can add little dots to the end of letters. There's lots of little things that you can do to jazz them up. So I'm gonna design my other two here so I know what I'm gonna put on my rocks before I get started. I'll speed that up, but I'll let you kinda of follow along here. So I'm gonna start with my word bright. Again, this is my center point, three letters on either side. The eye's a little bit more vertical. It's not as wide of a letter, but I still wanna to try to um, get that on there. So if you look about halfway down your stone, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my G over here. And I'm just widening the left-hand side of each letter. For this design. Okay, and then another eye here. I always like to do kind of a change in font or text, if you like. Um, something that has a little bit more design element and then something more simple. That's just the way that I like to do my stones. Everybody has their own way to go about it, but I like having some negative space sometimes as well. Something simple. Perfect to hide around town, right? So I'm gonna do the You Are Loved on this one. So I'm gonna start with my word loved here. Now, even though it is hand letter style, cursive style, you can kind of place your letters out of order because I usually write each letter individually since I'm doing it with a pen and not with like a, a brush. Um, so you can place, say you're like your V in the middle of your stone. Yeah, I tend to kind of separate them each anyways and then connect them. Okay, and then when I do these, I know you've heard me say this a hundred times probably if you follow the channel, but the downward strokes are the ones that I make thicker. So you just come back anywhere you're going down and widen that one. And fill it in. So you go up, back down and around here. So we go to the left side of the O, same here, up, back down. Um, kind of how my spacing is, is whether I kind of go to the left of the line or the right of the line to thicken it up. It is a really good way to kind of fix your spacing slightly if you need to, because you can 
widen in either direction. And this would go up and then back down here. Okay. Now up here I have this next to each other, but I made my L and D a little bit bigger. So I kind of want to get the words fit in the center. So I'm actually going to change it to U, R stacked this way. And maybe I'll do all lowercase. U, R. Like that. So I am going to shift it so that the A is to the side of the Y. So we're going to go right here. I got a little hair on there. I'm gonna let my paint dry before I go in after that, just so I don't accidentally smear anything. Dog hair or something. So you are loved. And I'm gonna actually, just a couple. Oops, sorry, it was out of screen there. Just a couple little hearts, just to add a little something there. Last one here, we're gonna do the U matter on here. Um, let's see here, let's go the TT. Again, center of the rock. We had one to either side of the center of the rock. So I'm gonna start with that. You can hear my dog over there. I promise she's okay. <laughs> so I'm doing my letters a little bit wider here so that I can come back and give them a little bit of thickness. Just to make it a little more bold. Just doing the vertical lines thicker and the horizontal ones a little thinner. Add a little something else here. Okay, just like that. So simple, super easy. Now the last step to these, of course, is they need to be sealed. Um, I use a spray clear coat most of the time on my stones because I can do a whole lot of them at once. Um, the biggest thing, anytime you're using kind of lettering, just do your first coat really light. And I will um, link to the sealing post after this. Um, I'm not going to seal my rocks at the end of every tutorial because that would just make them all so much longer. So, so simple, so easy. I hope you enjoyed this quick little hack for getting these fun base coats. The black really pops on top of those. Look at that so fun and an easy way to spread kindness around town so again if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up feel free to share it out there the more people leaving around kindness rocks the more people that can stumble across them when they need them we'll be back soon with another rock painting tutorial bye bye